uh, for the meeting uh, that we started streaming. Thanks, Mario. Uh, please only speak when invited to by the chair. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communications via the chair. Please ensure that your mics are muted when you're not speaking. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time frames. If referring to another written submission or to any written submission, please refer to the specific page number in the agenda pack. Any new evidence can only be submitted at the discretion of the chair and the agreement of all parties. If you're having technical difficulties, please use the chat function to alert the meeting or dial in using the details in the invitation that I sent. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the subcommittee. Any persistent disruptive behavior will result in removal from the meeting. And uh, once the application has been considered, any remaining parties will be asked to log out of the hearing. So please do so promptly so that councillors will have an opportunity to deliberate and make a decision. Each party will be notified of the decision within five working days. However, the licensing service may be able to inform you of the outcome of the hearing tomorrow with full details of the decision to follow. Uh, with that said, I'd now like to invite the councillors to elect a chair. I'd like to elect uh, Councillor for Janet Thomas, please. Seconded. Oh, thank you, colleagues. All oh, happy to chair tonight. Oh, good evening, all, and welcome to tonight. Oh, uh, licensing committee. And before I go on, can I ask members to introduce themselves, please? Yeah, Councillor Smith, uh, Stoke Newington Ward, and also chair of the licensing committee. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy, Hackney Wick Ward, member of the licensing committee. And I'm um, Councillor Susan Fadano Thomas, the cabinet lead for community safety and regulatory services. Oh, I've received apologies tonight for from Councillor Joe Walker, but Councillor Smith is here substituting for Councillor Walker. And do I ask if members have any interest to declare? No, chair. None, chair. Thank you. And we haven't got any minutes for consideration tonight. So I'll move. Can I call on Amanda North, our legal advisor, to briefly outline how the hearing will proceed tonight? Thank you, Amanda. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Chair. Um, step one, the appointment of the chair and introductions which have just been done. Um, step two, the licensing officer will outline the report. Step three, the applicant will present their case in support of their application. Step um, four, the responsible authorities in the case will be invited to make their representations and highlight the reasons for objecting to the application, and um, which are also contained within the report. Step five, other persons um, there will be invited, uh, other persons will be invited to present their case and the reasons why they're objecting or supporting the application, and that's also contained within the report. Step six is a discussion phase, uh, which will be for 15 minutes. Sorry, I do apologize, I didn't uh, say the times. Um, each of those steps, two, three, four, five, and two, three, four, and five, will be for five minutes each. And the discussion phase is for 15 minutes only. And that's where the um, members uh, will lead a discussion by the chair um, uh, uh, to clarify any points and uh, to ask any questions if necessary about the application. Step seven, closing remarks. Each party will have an uh, opportunity to make their um, closing remarks um, as, as to what their final comments are and observations um, about the um, hearing and the um, concerns that are raised during the discussion phase and those remarks should be brief. Step eight, final clarification. The licensing committee members will then have a final opportunity to seek clarification on any of the points raised, following which the chair will conclude the discussion. Uh, step eight, um, sorry, step nine, the uh, members will then retire uh, to make uh, their, um, their decision and all the parties will be asked to leave the meeting. Thank you. Thanks very much, Amanda. I'll now move to we've only got one agenda item tonight and that is the last day St. Michael's Church 
and Yard, which is on Lenet, London EC2A 4QX. A hand went up. Who is that? On that note, which is we're on step two now, can I call on the licensing? Oh, yeah, for, uh, forgive me, so, Councillor for John Thompson. I just want before we continue, just wanted to clarify a couple of names I can see here, just to make sure that we have it for the record. Uh, uh, so forgive me, but uh, Tim Flack, you're not on the list that I've seen. I just wondering, is is that who you are? Does that mean I can't be a part of this? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a resident next door to the church. Uh, correct. We can, we can only allow people into the meeting who uh, have already provided a, a representation and have been confirmed through the licensing team. It is being streamed live on YouTube. Did right. you object, Tim? Well, I didn't have an option, do I? <laughs> it's not about, obviously, I object to the uh, proposal, yes. But uh, what you're saying is I have to leave because I'm not allowed to be a part of this. So, um, Tim, did you, Tim, did you object in the right time? Clearly not. So I, I'm, okay. I, I, I will leave. Um, Mr. Um, Flatch, uh, if I can just make a suggestion, if it assists you, if you know any of the um, uh, local residents who have made a representation and who are going to be speaking tonight, you could actually give them your comments to make on your behalf or, or you know, to feed through as part of the process, if that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, sorry, forgive me, uh, MD101, if you could just confirm your name, that would be really helpful. Yes, that's a shorthand for Miles Davis, actually, but it's Tim Webb, Tim Webb from 68 Leonard Street. <laughs> Thank you, Tim, appreciate that. And Dip Dip, I'm assuming you are Dip Tesh Patel. Hello, Dip Dip? Dip Dip, can you hear us? Hello, deep, deep. This is microphone showing. Hey, hello, hello. Can you oh, hear me? Yeah, yes. Can you confirm your name? Wonderful. Okay, it's Diptesh Patel and Mr. Mukumbai Patel. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Councillor for Janice Thomas. I think we Thank we're you. I think we're good now. Okay. Thanks very much, Mark, for doing that. Can I now invite the licensing officer to outline the report? Thanks. Thank you, Chair. So the item we are going to consider for this evening is for a premises license received under the Licensing Act uh, 2003 for the, for the premises last days, St. Michael's Church um, and, sorry, St. Michael's Church and Yard, Leonard Street. The premises is seeking permission for films, live music, recorded music, and to authorize a supply of alcohol for consumption on the premises from 9 to 2300, Sunday to Thursday, and from 9 to midnight, Friday and Saturday, and late night refreshment from 2300 to midnight Friday and Saturday, as stated within the report. After the consultation period, we have received representations from the police, licensing and other persons in our guest, as well as in support of this application. We have received additional information from other persons and these document has been circulated. I have nothing else to add. Thank you, Chair. Th thank you. Oh, Amanda? Yes, Chair. I don't know if the licensing officer wanted to clarify about the EP officer um, attending for a short period, only because we need to decide uh, whether that's next or um, after the applicant makes their representation. Thank you. Yes, Chair. Uh, we have requested the Environmental Protection Officer, uh, Mr. Rockwell Charles, to attend this evening. He has withdrawn his representation. He's just here briefly for the members to ask any questions or clarification as part of his withdrawal. Thank you. Uh, I'll, can I ask Rockwell if he can stay until after the applicant has outlined their report? Would that be okay? Um, yes, that will be. Yes. Thanks very much for that. Um, can I move swiftly to the applicant? Um, remember, you've got uh, up to five minutes to please present your application. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. May I please start by telling you what this premises is not? It is not the type of premises the residents fear. It's definitely not a nightclub or a cocktail bar. 
or the type of mainstream disruptive alcohol-led premises recently identified in your cumulative impact study as making an adverse impact in Shoreditch. Instead, it is a professionally managed cultural venue offering a diverse and inclusive range of arts-led and community-minded events, which in fact is exactly the type of premises that your recent cumulative impact report identifies is sadly in decline in Shoreditch. As a result, we submit to you that the church proposals are the antidote to the worrying decline of cultural venues and concerning trend towards mainstream bar ch chains. And by granting the license, you could help to restore some of Shoreditch's special cultural and bohemian heritage. In my submissions, you'll see some examples of the type of events being proposed, ranging from fashion shows, piano recitals, community wellness classes, the London Youth Choir, art installations, charity events for child cancer groups, shelter, crisis, refugee crisis foundation, and the London Community Kitchen to feed vulnerable people in Hackney. To help subsidise this diverse cultural and community offer, the applicant is also asking your permission, please, for occasional low-key live music performances, wedding receptions, and carefully vetted corporate functions. The applicant's proposals will also provide an opportunity for members of the public to once again enjoy one of Hackney's stunningly beautiful Grade 1 listed buildings made possible after a thoughtful restoration programme. The applicant is grateful to the responsible authorities and local residents for their time during consultation. You'll see in your report, the applicant has sent numerous letters to local residents and hosted a residence evening. Uh, this resulted in support from lo the local community and cultural groups, uh, including local charities and music of black origin. The applicant, of course, acknowledges that there are concerns amongst local residents. Uh, Kerry and David, who are with us this evening, together with a new addition to the team, Philip Adams, who's a founding partner of the director uh, and the director of um, that's the Saatchi Gallery, are extremely experienced operators. They're already working with Sam uh, Mathis in the Hackney Night Scheme and are confident they can address the residents' concerns. Very quickly summarised as follows, Chair. Firstly, concerns about links to the previous problematic operator. The applicant can confirm no links whatsoever to that operator. Second, the use of the premises as a disruptive late night venue. Chair, I've addressed you on the culture led and non alcohol led use of the premises. Uh, thirdly, noise outbreak. Chair, you'll see the independent noise report and new conditions that provide absolute safeguards under the public nuisance licensing objective. And reassuringly, from the you, Mr. Charles, who is your expert advisor on noise, has withdrawn his representation. Uh, fourthly, queuing. Chair, you'll see in the photos uh, in the report queues. Those queues relate to a daytime pop-up shop with a donation to charity and no licensable activities. In the event there are queues, and we're not anticipating them in the future, the applicant has carefully devised an entry policy eliminating queuing in the church gardens during licensable events. Uh, fifthly, uh, external activity concerns, Chair, the application deliberately excludes any possibility of external uh, licensable activities and the applicant's team will provide a supervisory presence to help drive out the existing antisocial behaviour cited in the representations and make the gardens safer for the benefit of local residents. Uh, six, concerns about dispersal, smoking, servicing and deliveries, Chair, you'll see the applicant's operational management plan at pages 85 to 92 of your report. Uh, finally, uh, the hours. Uh, Chair, the hours are consistent with your policy core hours and are vital to make this cultural project viable. On policy, Chair, page 62, you'll see my submissions on why the cultural use of this very special building in your borough directly promotes the licensing objective policy, licensing policy two, and the underlying objectives of your policy for the benefit and enrichment of Hackney. So to finish, Chair, this applicant cares deeply about St Michael's Church and is passionate about making a harmonious and positive contribution to the community, summed up perfectly by the applicant's mantra borrow, borrowed from Coretta Scott King. The greatness of the community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. So on that note, Chair, please may I fee please finish by thanking you for your consideration of the application and we ask you to please grant the license meaning this premises is brought within the regulatory control of the licensing regime for the benefit of your authorities and the local residents thank you chair
Thanks very much. What I didn't ask you to do, Jack, I'm guessing you are Jack Spiegelis and then you didn't yeah. introduce yourself. I'm the solicitor. I'm so, to I'm so sorry, Chair. I am Jack Spiegler, solicitor for the applicant. Thank you. Thank, thanks very much. And as we've heard, we've got uh, Rockwell Charles here, the environmental protection officer. Can I ask colleagues? to ask if you have any clarification from him before he leaves, then I'll go to the responsible uh, authorities. Councillor Kennedy. Um, thank you. I think just for um, reassurance of uh, committee members, uh, I wondered if Mr. Charles um, could confirm that he had read the acoustic report that's provided in the applicant's um, submission. Um, uh, and was it that and the conditions um, that led him uh, to withdraw his representation? Um, yes, thank you. Um, basically, I put in a representation initially on the 1st of February um, against the application on the grounds of um, the prevention of public nuisance. Um, I visited there on the 28th and I, I'm sorry, on the, First of February, when I put in the representations, I put in suggested conditions that the council would actually require um, in regards to regulated entertainment. We visited on the 28th of February, there was a small sound check, and the conditions which I put on, or the suggested conditions, were actually accepted. So, based on those accepting the applicant accepting those conditions, then the um, representation was withdrawn and conditions would be dealing with the types of limiters that would be there um, also the designated smoking area and also a, a standard condition in regards to music emanating from the premises shall be played at such a level to ensure that no nuisance is caused in any unassociated neighboring premises so the, the conditions are quite rigid in that sense and with regards to regulated entertainment and based on that, I withdrew my representation. Oh, uh, sorry, I heard. I'm afraid I saw an MD answer up at this moment. The sorry, I'm not calling you to speak. This oh. clarification is for members hearing the application to get clarification from the environmental protection officer so uh, can i ask i think i read somewhere i'm flipping through the acoustic uh, report that when the when the door was open the noise became more audible outside and in this application there is uh, uh, or the applicant is saying that windows and doors will be closed after 11 p.m. And the 11 p.m. is after they finished the event. So not, uh, so which means, don't, sorry, which means during an event when there will be obviously music in the, in the building, then windows and doors if the windows and doors are open, then there might be uh, the noise level might impact on the immediate uh, residents. Can you clarify that, please? As I said before, the conditions is regards to nuisance. So if they had the doors open and it wasn't causing a nuisance, we can't take action. If it is, then we can take action against that. So they have got a limiter inside on the premises, which the council, let's say, for instance, we were to get complaints, it's not down to them to set it. So that we are satisfied that the levels um, within residential premises are not causing a nuisance. So if there's any residents that are being affected, if the council is minded to grant the license and they were affected, they could contact the local authority. We will go into their premises and another engineer will go into um, St. Michael's, and we will set the levels which is going to be agreed by the council. So the conditions there are quite rigid in that, not in that regards that um, 
I'm satisfied that with regards to regulated entertainment, that, that these conditions are, are more than adequate. Thanks very much. Sorry, I've got our legal advisor, Amanda Sounty. So, Amanda? Uh, yes, Chair. I don't know if you wanted to get clarification on, I appreciate um, uh, conditions were submitted and um, a visit was undertaken by the EP officer, um, but um, how, what uh, factors are they taking into consideration uh, in respect of local residents and, and the impact it may have on the area, the noise? Sorry, um, is that directed to me? Yes. Yes, yes, please. As I said, as I said, we would deal with 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 the prevention of public nuisance with regards to regulated entertainment. So we're looking at the noise generated on the premises. Where it is, let's say, for instance, I, I, I saw some complaints about issues with parking or antisocial behaviour in the streets. We do not deal with that part of it in, in regards to that. We would deal with the life with the actual premises itself. Um, so from that perspective, um, if it is public nuisance in that regards, it may be something that the antisocial behaviour where the police would deal with. Or residents, if they are being affected um, by the noise, I'm not saying that they would be, but then this is issues where we've got a licensing team that goes out and does monitoring of licensed premises to see if they are um, causing any antisocial behaviour. And if they are, then they would actually put in for a review of the licence. But from ours, we would be looking at it purely from the regulated entertainment side. Chair, I was actually Thanks. referring to um, the um, environmental protection requirements, not so much antisocial behaviour. Um, I know that would be dealt with separately by the police and licensing, um, but more about the findings in terms of the noise levels or the potential noise that could be affecting um, the area um, and the impact on it, etc. So was there any observations in relation to local residents and uh, the impact on the area from the potential right. noise from the building, so, which but, is what they were actually investigating. Yeah, and, and when I actually consult on these, these cases, what happens is that I would actually interrogate our noise database with regards to complaints registered on our system. And I've gone through some of the complaints here, and there's no complaints registered on the noise database. They may have contacted licensing or go directly to their counsellors, but what I would look on is on our database, our noise database, and there is no justification in, in that regards to say, well, yes, I could go and knock on a complainant's door, you know, because we would look at that as an official complaint. If somebody registers a complaint on the noise database, then an officer would respond back to them. Um, I know that there have been, um, I don't think it's a community event where there was a long line and rubbish, and, and I, I, I've read those complaints, but it's not something where it had been registered on our system where it's like regulated entertainment or more. But going forward, as I said, um, and we've done this in the past where um, residents have complained and if it's in regards to regulated entertainment and they put these conditions down for a, a noise limiter, then we would go to the complainant's premises and we would listen to the levels and, and set the levels so that it does not cause a nuisance within their premises. So they've got that as a Fail safe in regards to, you know, things do not go according to plan. Th thanks, thanks very much for that. I know Councillor Smith wished to call me, but just to clarify for residents attending tonight, I know Rockwell mentioned the fact that we don't deal with that. I think we that he's referring to is his service as. Uh, 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 environmental protection team know that we're not going to deal with other areas if a uh, nuisance or ASB licensing team will deal with that just to clarify that that we're not saying the council cannot deal with the other uh, uh, um, ASB issues if it happens working with the police because that would be a sort of breach Councillor Amanda, do you want to come back? Is that your hand is off uh, again? Yes, Chair. Just, just, um, just a suggestion whether or not, because I appreciate uh, Mr. Rockwell is only here for a short period, so I'm just trying to make sure that you have all the information you might want or need. Um, is that did he have any observation, or is he aware of anything in relation to when the premises um, operated tens? If has he had any complaints then? 
and or um, in February 2024, um, uh, were there any complaints then? So what, what I would say, I've been called to this meeting kind of today. So I haven't interrogated the whole system. What I've just looked at is people that have made complaints on the data sheets and also on our system on the St. Michael's Church. And all I could see was the database that we've operated, you have, it's very, very specific. Um, and if I could go through complainants' names, um, also the address, it has not flagged up anything in that regard. Um, what I would also say is that some of the events and the way how we operate our noise service, it's not a seven day service. So if people do, you know, some residents may go online and see that there's not a service on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they may not register the complaints. What we tell people to do is to still log these complaints because they do go into the system. So irrespective that there's not a reactive noise service going on, when we actually are consulting on these applications, we go into our database and look at these complaints. And when we are actually making a representation to the actual applicant, we would say like, we received so many complaints within this year period. This was not the case. Th thanks very much. Um, in terms of, oh, Councillor Smith, let me bring you in. I was going to ask Rockwell that in terms of the noise limiter what can you please uh again talk us through how that works with your team and the premises thank you what usually happens is that there is a condition and i'll, I'll probably read the condition that was actually placed so it kind of it explains it um a sound limiting device within the premises shall be installed um, to control all regulated entertainment generated in the premises. The device shall be approved by and set to the council satisfaction, so to ensure that noise nuisance is not caused in any unassociated residential premises. No additional noise generating equipment associated with regulated entertainment shall be used on the premises without being routed through the sound limiting device and um, the sound limiting device shall be maintained for the duration of its use. So what this sound limiting device is, you've got two devices on, on well, two main type of device, devices on the market. If it's something where they've got their own in-house equipment, you can get a, 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 a kind of device which is called an automatic volume control, but it's like a compressor type device, meaning that if they do turn up, it, it works on the signal of the music, of the music, the electric signal. So if it gets a higher signal up to a level, it just compresses the music back down. You can't exceed it. And then you have the normal, um, what do you call it, a cutout device, whereby you would set the music at a certain level, that's the other limiter. And once it meets that level for a period of time and it exceeds it, then it cuts the whole music out. So this is something that we will discuss with the applicant when we actually, um, when they're going to actually put in their, their noise limiter they would usually send us the specs of what they're going to put in first and we will see if it's appropriate for the actual venue so that they can operate. Secondly, what we need is residents to cooperate with us because we would need residents to go into a residential premises when they're actually setting this limiter, ideally the one resident that is closest to them. And what we would do, one officer would go into the premises, another officer would actually go to St. Michael's Church, they would have their engineer or acoustic consultant and we would agree like objective levels from within the actual St. Michael's Church. And then the other officer would be in the complainant's premises, listening in it to subjectively. And if they're satisfied, then we will get a level and then we will write to them and agree this level. So once it's at that level, then it should not be causing a problem. And that's what the limiters are there to do. Thanks very much because you I asked that question because I'm aware you're not going to be here for the rest of the meeting and that of uh, that condition said approved and said to the council satisfaction so that's why I want that clarification before you leave us 
Oh, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Smith, for waiting patiently. Can I bring you in now? Thank you. Yes, yeah, just one uh, very uh, quick question for Rockwell. So, Rockwell, with, with the, the new conditions and everything, you don't think then that we would need an extra condition to say that we should have the windows and doors shut at, say, 10? Um, so is that, what you, is that what I'm reading from, from your, your, your uh, answers? Um, the way I take it, if they cause a nuisance and we witness it, we will take enforcement action. Those conditions are quite rigid. So, I mean, the second, the third um, condition is that the music emanating from the premises shall be played at such a level um, to ensure that no nuisance is caused in any unassociated neighbouring premises. So if they have the windows open and they can meet that condition, then by all means, you know, they can do that. But if we witness it, then we will be taking enforcement action against them. It's as simple as that. Okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much. I uh, when we get to the uh, the questions or discussion stage, I'll still explore that questions with the applicant because this will be a sort of uh, higher venue. They won't necessarily be there at all time, like you said. If I have my wedding reception there with my DJ, something like that. So it's not them that will be supervising it. It's going to be my wedding and my DJ in the premises. But I'll come to that to when we when we get to the discussion stages. I think uh, on that note, thanks very much, Rockwell, for your time and thanks for being here to answer or clarify those questions to members to help us in our decision tonight. And um, yeah, and I'll now move to the next stage, which is going to the relevant responses. Chair, would you like to release Mr. Charles from the meeting? Thank you. I've kind of done that to thank him for being here. Thank you. So can I now move to the responsible authorities? I've got PC Amanda Griggs and David Tweet from licensing. Uh, can I call on PC Griggs? Over to you. Please introduce yourself if better than I do. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, I'm PC Griggs from the Hackney Licensing Police Licensing Unit. Um, our initial concerns from the application were based on the temporary event notice they had before Christmas, where we received a few few issues and a few complaints. However, since then, we met with the applicant on site and discussed access and egress plans and where the smoking area was going to be. Um, and as you can see from my representations that are at B1 in your pack, um, that we were satisfied with the plans that were put in place and discussed with us then, and then subsequent information that's been sent, um, that these will now sort of limit any disruptions to the local residents because they're using a different entrance and exit than they had originally used for that. Um, we also asked for some good communication with the residents, and again, that's been done. Um, I've seen several letters now to residents, and there's um, the solicitor said that they've had um, an evening for the residents to come and see what's going on and speak to them and everything else. So the communication there seems to have been good and had taken on board. Um, our only concern left um, was regarding the smoking area, which I know is going to be within the site's yard on the Leonard Street side. And all I would ask is that if after 9pm that the numbers out there are limited um, in some way, just to just to stop that any impact on the residents on Leonard Street. Um, Again, depending on the size of the space they've got out there um, and how many you can get out there, I would just some sort of condition just limiting how many sort of it, later in the evening you can have to minimise that disruption. Other than that, police um, are quite satisfied with with everything that's been proposed so far by the applicant. That's all I've got for now. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Amanda. That's. Uh... Can I take, uh, colleagues, I can see your hands all, but I, can I take the second uh, responsible authority from licensing? Then I'll go, come back to your questions. Uh, over to you, David Tweed from licensing. Please uh, outline your objection. Thank you, Chair. So my representation is uh, at page one. 
131 of today's agenda, Appendix B2. So similar to PC Griggs, uh, I made representation uh, just about some concerns given the, the location of premises, where it is the nature of the um, some of the issues that we get around where that premises is located in a shortage area. Um, references has already been made to the community of impact study, which took place very recently. Um, and I've set out some of the findings that are there. Um, myself and PC Griggs undertook the visit to the site on the 2nd of February. Um, we were given a tour of the site and shown further plans, etc., which I believe that applicant has has also um, benefited or uh, given an opportunity for some local residents to do the same. Um, uh, also in the representation I made reference to some planning issues potentially, which uh, my understanding is that there's uh, planning permission for um, uh, uh, office use. Um, and obviously it's no longer a church, but uh, my understanding is that that planning application will, will follow uh, depending on the outcome of tonight's or depending on the outcome of this application. Um, so I can understandable that there's quite a few people who want to speak to today. So I'll, I'll just leave it there for now here. Thank you. Thanks very much, David, for, for that. Can I bring in members for now? Clarification from Councillor Kennedy, please. Thank you. I'm looking at the aerial photo on page 73, um, and I wondered if if people could um, bring that up, and specifically for uh, PC Griggs and Mr. Tewitt, how they understand the entrance and exit of um, customers to be managed through that Mark Street uh, Gardens and Mark Square. Thank you. Can I ask the licensing officer, are you able to pull that on the screen? Is it possible? Yeah. Page 73? 73, yeah. You, you might need to rotate it, Suba. Yeah. I had to rotate it to get Are we all getting to see this? Bear with us. Yes, please. Okay. That's why I asked the licensing officer to put it on the screen so that That's everyone the one. can see. That Thank is you. Councillor Kennedy, do you want to clarify your question? Yeah, so that. Um, uh, PC Griggs said that on at the site visit she talked through uh, entrance and egress. Uh, I was slightly confused here because it talks about a guest entrance and exit between eight in the morning and seven at night um, on the left hand side there, and then a pedestrian exit after seven at night on the right hand side. But the floor plans of the church don't show any exit door there um, and then you've got taxi pickup down at the bottom on luke street so so what's so, PC griggs understanding of the management of people coming in and out so previously they'd used the gate that goes to on the left hand side to, to mark street i believe it was and you've got i think is it victoria flats or buildings or something along there where there's lots of residents um people have come in and out that way past the residential area um what they're using now is going out onto st mark square up the other end where it says the pedestrian exit after nine um 1900 hours the gate there for people to to go out of so the disruption isn't people leaving onto mark street now it's going the other way away from the residential areas that was my understanding and so then chair I can, see some <laughs> can i bring the can i bring sorry do you want i was going to say can i bring the applicant in please confirm or clarify this point please thank you hello, hello. 
you turn your mic off. Hello, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so obviously the park, uh, which is... Do you mind to introduce is, yourself? Is Sorry. Main entrance way, which is Mark's... Sorry, guessing, David, can you hear? Is that David? Can you... 7 p.m. That entrance is the one that we David. invite um, anyone David. that's in the park or our guests that are coming to come and see the space to come and come through that way. Outside of hours, then, when the park is closed for the... Hi, hang on a second. Oh, uh, sorry, David. I think they've muted. I think they've got two devices. One, they've muted one. He's still I, talking. Yeah, I, just, I just moved. I've just uh, muted him and I've asked him if he can hear us in the chat. So let's see what they know. They're still talking. He's still talking. Yeah. We can. They can't hear us. Excellent. David, 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 did you hear us? Do you hear us? Okay. Can we'll you hear that. us? We'll try that again. Awfully sorry. I think you've got two devices. One you yes. can hear from one you cannot. Can I ask you to mute? Right. Can we I are. ask you to mute for now and hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. As I was saying, when I invited you to speak as the applicant to clarify this, I was asking you to introduce yourself, but we noticed you couldn't hear us. So please, can you do that and clarify that briefly? Thanks very much. Of course. So I'm David uh, Gardner. I'm working on this project um, from an events background and a design-led background. Um, and this is Kerry O'Connor, who is our COO. Um, so yes, so now I've had a practice run. Uh, the, the, the points marked on this map are exactly as we discussed with the meeting that we had in February. Previously, we've had people going through Mark Street, which is obviously residential on both sides, um, because that was the gate available to us for the council out of hours. Since then, we've spoken with the council um, for the for the two events that have run after seven o'clock. We've had an agreement with where we would lock the gates up afterwards on Mark Square, which has meant that any guests leaving have been ushered out with our security onto Mark Square, which is obviously a pedestrian street as opposed to Leonard Street or Mark Street, uh, which is directly into the traffic. And then because of the thoroughfare on Luke Street, we had to put taxis on to Luke Street from spaces. So our main entrance, which is the most stunning when you walk into the building, is through the one marked um, guest entrance and exit using the three words pasta, cages and body. Uh, and then the one outside of ours, the pedestrian exit after 7 p.m. is vital tour and squad. So that's uh, we, we use that technology, which has got a, a, a uh, app called what three words which is used by the emergency services so it identifies that three meter square directly with those three words so that people can find that location exactly rather than wandering up and down different streets trying to find numbers or addresses Th thanks very much for that clarification suba is okay now to take this off screen and thanks for can i Again, asking Councillor Smith, I'll bring you back. If we are mindful, uh, Amanda, uh, uh, please feel free to call me. If we are mindful to approve this application, uh, it, it, will it be possible to actually add a condition that those, uh, the, that entrance, the residential entrance, as David explained, Will, will not be used after 7 p.m. It will it be something we can do, Amanda? Chair, you're talking to PC Briggs, aren't you? Or no, no, you? I'm asking you in, from yeah. your legal lens. Is oh, sorry, I wasn't talking can... to PC Briggs. Sorry, I do apologize. Will it, sorry, if we are mindful, I'm asking if we're mindful to approve this application tonight are we able to add a condition that those the those entrants would not be used after 7 p.m um you can do if uh, provided the parties agree to it and you discuss okay. it with them i would say you have to discuss any proposed conditions you're thinking of if they're not already in the in the pack 
that you need to discuss them with the parties in this meeting. Um, and uh, also, I would just double check with the licensing officer that he doesn't have any issues with those conditions because we're talking about enforceability and whether or not um, you know there's any issue about that. So that's the only concern I would have about them. Um, the only issue I was going to um, raise in case uh, um, you members forget is I know that um, uh, then uh, was uh, concerned that there were no conditions about SIA. So I don't know if you want to check with um, PC Briggs about whether or not that's necessary. Thank, thanks very much. Councillor Smith, can I bring you in? Yeah, thank uh, you, Chair. Just on this point about the entrance and exits, um, there was in one of the other submissions the idea that the taxi point should be moved to Leonard Circus because it was sort of causing a problem where it's indicated on the map. Um, I don't know if, if that's something that could be we discussed uh, in the meeting. Ian, you're shaking your head. I can, t I can see that. You'll have plenty of time to come in. Um, uh, so the taxi point is a contentious issue, we can tell from that. Uh, that's one point. And then just to the police, Amanda, there is a condition, page 24, condition 28 for smokers, and it's suggesting 20 uh, in the yard. Does that sound um, like a like a decent number to you? Yeah, that sounds that sounds reasonable. Um, considering it's quite so quite a large premises, twenty as long as it, again uh, after that late hour, there's somebody just monitoring and making sure they're they're not doing anything they shouldn't be being too loud out there. Um, but yes, no, twenty sounds reasonable. Okay, great, thank you. That's it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. And uh, going back to uh, the question to uh, PC Griggs about this SIA, do you mind? Do you have anything to say to that? Because while some of the activities might not be licensable activities, but if you are bringing four hundred people to a space. What that do you ask uh, police officers? Was there any discussion around that with the applicant when you visited? Yep, yeah, there was discussion that SIA would be used when they were needed and stuff. Um, I, I can't believe I probably missed some sort of a condition around, but using them on a risk assessment basis as and when they were needed. Um, and it's up to the applicant, obviously, to then risk assess when they would need them and have appropriate numbers. As I say again, I can see some nodding. I'm, I'm sure we must have discussed something like that. Um, it's probably an, an oversight that we've missed that as a condition. Of, but yeah, something along the lines of the, the SIA being there on a risk assessment basis, so obviously not needed for every event. So thanks very much. Okay, can Mark, you clarify how many SIA? Uh, it, that's that would depend on the risk assessment, isn't it? Yes, so, it would depend on the event and the, the risk assessment. I said if it was a, a more of a, 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 a I don't know, a, more people, a, a, say a sit down, some things might not need any at all, or might need one or two just for some ticketing. It might be that it, there's more people in there and therefore they'd need more. Again, that would be part of the risk assessment I would expect the applicant to do before. Th thanks very much. Mark, you want to come in? I think I'm moving us along now. Mark, <laughs> no, no, it, it wasn't that. To... Thank you, Councillor No, it's just we've had another person arrive, so I just wanted to uh, ascertain their identity. Um, the person on the phone who just joined about five minutes ago, your name is Dan's Unknown. Are you able to confirm your name or at least your, uh, represent, your representation number in the pack? Can you hear us? I think you heard the woman with glasses you just came right. in with a cream jumper you're on mute as well hi okay. you are... yeah my name is sheila teague i'm part of the um group that's been looking into all of this licensing i'm a re uh, local resident and business owner for nearly 40 years thanks, thanks you, sheila. you're on the list yeah we've got your name um, on thank you for it yep Thanks very much all for that clarification, colleagues. Can I now move us to tonight? I've received notification for uh, many people to speak here tonight. And please, when I 
Can you uh, introduce yourself? I've got uh, quite a few names, and it is important that we don't repeat. I will give off to two minutes for comment. Uh, it is uh, if somebody's already made the point you want to make, it would be good to only add rather than repeating the same thing. I've got a uh, C2 Team Web. I've got uh, C3, Noe Gross. I've got C5, Sandra. I've got C7, Davinia. I've got C9, Brown. I've got C10, Ian. I've got Howie, C18, Sheila, C19, C22, Louis Garrett, C26, Deep Tesh, and C33, David. C39 Davy. So we got quite a number of names. And in support, I can confirm we got somebody. I've not got your name uh, as recorded as England coordinator C43. So on that note, can I ask Tim to come in, make your comment? Tim, do I have Tim here? You do, you do, do, you do. Okay, please, over to Kim. Now I ask you to put on your camera, identify yourself and speak. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm on my daughter's laptop and her camera doesn't work and my laptop is not in my possession at the moment. So there is a difficulty with that. Some of you on this have seen me in person, including Kerry um, <laughs> and a few of my neighbours. Um, but no, my camera doesn't work here. Otherwise, I'd be happily on camera. Can I give you, can I please make your comment? Or oh, please, yeah. got up to two. Yeah, so I've sort of raced through this really. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of questions I have generally, but and first, which would be a good start is if the subcommittee can at some point tonight, please confirm that it's satisfied that the premises has requisite planning permission for the intended use. Um, the current permission, obviously in November 2021, is for offices, and I'm assuming that it's not been implemented, so we're running on some other planning permission. Um, turning to the licensing objectives, and, and given what others will be saying this evening, I think I'll limit ourselves to the prevention of public nuisance. Um, my first point is really a, a key premise of the license application is that customers will enter and leave the premises via Mark Street Gardens. Um, I, I, I hear the small conversation earlier about the conversation that's been held with, with the authority that runs the parks, but can the subcommittee please confirm or ask the applicant to find the basis of the right of way uh, as it's key to the whole premise of the application? And I only ask because the land registry title to the premises refers to the applicant's right of way as being acquired right, and given that an acquired right is one that is acquired at the time that it is used and that is for a church or reclamation centre which means in fact I think that the land does not have rights of way for use as an events venue and the authority should know that should understand the value of that and there should be a negotiation and the residents should be able to inject some thought into that um, so I, I can't see that there are even rights of way across this land that are applicable to this centre for that use um, if the license is granted, of course, the applicant. Uh, do you want to round up, please? Thank you. What? We had two minutes, not five minutes. You got two minutes. I thought we had five minutes. No, I'm afraid. Okay, well, I'll say this then. So, the planning application, the note from the 27, 2021 planning permission, condition 19, which was considered by the owners of the property for the office use. And therefore, an event's use is egregiously worse than that. It suggests that the total noise emanating from the property shall be greater than 10 dBAs below background noise level at neighbouring noise sensitive premises. The noise report that you've had conducted does not even reference the fact that 68 to 72 Leonard Street is residential. It's regarded as commercial. There's been no sound noise um, identification in relation to the issues. Thank, that thanks very oh. much. Thank, thank you. I've noted some of the questions you asked. When members start to ask the applicant question, we're going to come back to it. But just to make a point around planning, 
planning and licensing a separate regime. But having said that, uh, if uh, uh, having a license permission does not automatically grant planning permission, so they will still go through uh, uh, making application for a planning permission. But that does not. Sorry, sorry. Please don't speak over me. That does not uh, stop us if we are mindful to grant this application or not. Planning and uh, licensing a separate regime. Just to clarify that. Thanks very much. Can I now move to? Um, no, thank you. You got up to two minutes. Would be good to ask you are all resident to. Sorry. Uh, first, I would like to say that the minute the agenda clearly says it's five minutes each on other person's case, and I've prepared uh, to speak for five minutes. Uh, so, unless there's an objection, I'm going to speak for uh, the five minutes. And I think everyone should be. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid you, I've, I just made the Mr. Gross that you've got up to two minutes. Amanda, okay. do you want to come in? Yes, yeah, sorry. I do apologize at the start of the meeting when I read out the procedure. I did say five minutes. But however, because of the number of people speaking tonight, that's the reason why the chair has had to make the unfortunate decision that um, local residents will have two minutes each to make their representation. But you can't repeat what each other says. So you'd have to make your representation. But if someone's already made those points, um, we'd ask you uh, to keep it to a minimum because otherwise the meeting will be longer than we um, have time for. So we're trying our best to fit everybody in, allowing two minutes each. I do apologize. I'm sorry. I but understand. We do, we do have your written representation Thanks. as well. Thank you. Th okay. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, we, we've got all your written representation. If we've got 14 people, if okay. 14 residents, uh, even yourself, if 14 residents are going to speak for five minutes each, we know, so depend on, 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 uh, or that's why we say please do not repeat because if we were making objection to the same application obviously there will be this uh, some of what you are saying will be the same for instance the first uh, uh comment was around planning i wouldn't expect another resident to raise the planning because we already noted that sorry to I interrupt you. Over to you, please. Thank you. I understand. And before I start on my two minutes, I would again like to uh, to uh, log whatever an objection that this doesn't seem to follow the the meeting for which uh, we prepared uh, for. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what the legality, the validity of this is, uh, since it's going to curtail our arguments, which we, we prepared for. I'll start now. Uh, so I'm Noe Gross, a resident at 68 Leonard Street uh, since 2012. I have autism and I work from home. Uh, I want to object to the application on all four grounds, um, mostly due to noise, light pollution, disorder and making the place unsuitable for children. Uh, I also believe that despite goodwill, and uh, the economic need will arise to do big uh, of the applicant. Um, they will end up having to do large type clubbing events since those uh, with hundreds of people, uh, since uh, those will be uh, paying more money. Uh, as an autistic person, uh, this uh, additional uh, noise uh, emanating from the promises would have a significant impact on my mental health. On the soundproofing on the report, Tim already noted uh, that the sound report doesn't seem to include that the closest immediate adjoining building to the license uh, was not considered as residential and includes uh, six uh, flats. Um, on the Mark Square uh, usage, before Mark Square, was closed at night. There was significant uh, noise uh, coming, uh, which was completely resolved once uh, the, the squares uh, were closed. Uh, the bona fide commercial premises reducing antisocial behavior argument is also uh, moot dishonest since the gardens are closed and opening would only increase such behavior. Um, 
on the noise restrictions, I understand that a license still says emanate from the premises, and I also understand that this would be with the doors closed, although it's unclear to me how patrons will exit uh, and uh, enter the building uh, with doors closed uh, during uh, night. Uh, on the light pollution, uh, our building and our bedrooms, I have a direct line of sight to the church windows, uh, so we would affect it there. Uh, on the disruption of peace in Mark Gardens, uh, they're currently used uh, by, by children, and queuing entry of patrons would uh, certainly severely disrupt that. Thanks. Thank you very much. No, do you mind to round up now? Thank you. Okay. Uh, and uh, smells uh, emanating from the uh, food will also uh, be an issue. And lastly, uh, would the security staff, like, would the gardens be closed after events? Uh, they were closed on the Hackney Council website due to antisocial behavior. And would the security staff have the same authority to evict people as the people normally closing the park? And they would also be a danger of forgetting locking people in, given the lesser visibility around a closure. And I will end here, but uh, again, objecting due to this uh, irregularity of not having my allotted time. Thank you. Th thanks very much. Can I just reassure the resident that uh, you mentioned that speaking for two minutes, we could tell your argument. You were invited here tonight because you've submitted uh, an objection and we've read all, all of that. So we already have, that would not in any way curtail your argument. We've got your objection, written objection, and we've gone through all those written objections yes. just to reassure you about that. But it, it, but it did, and... Uh, Sorry, I it can I go to Sandra, here. please? Sorry, can I please go to Sandra? Thank you. Sandra, is Sandra here? Sandra? Chair, she yes, said yes. the number of the actual uh, rep mm. on the um, paperwork. What C yes, number is it? My permission and my permit uh, currently on my computer. Okay. Uh, oh, hi, Sandra. The, hello. I am a resident of Mark Street. In fact, I live, I'm part of the residence. I live on the building that holds about nine flats, uh, immediately adjacent to the church. Um, I can say that on the uh, fashion show uh, venue that was held, we definitely heard the music inside our home, the vibrations, and we, we definitely heard it. I'm very thankful that actually it ended up sooner than, than the expected time because uh, we started to get a deep worry about how our future is going to look like. I completely stand by everything that Noe Gross said. And uh, uh, with that being said, I'm done with my two minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sandra. Really appreciate your uh, concise yeah, uh, contributions. Amanda, can please. I just interrupt? Just, I was just thinking, uh, whilst these um, local residents are making their representation, it might just assist if they could just briefly say whether or not they responded to the applicant's um, uh, consultation, um, you know, engagement about the application, because um, that might assist you as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, just to clarify that we're aware that the applicant has written to resident and also arrange engagement meetings. So if you've attended any of that or you've responded to their letters, please do indicate. And I'll move to Davinia, please. Davinia? Can I see the video on the... Yeah, if I refer, you refer to the C number, um, possibly. Yeah, yeah, okay, maybe the C, and that would be C7. I don't believe the venue is here, Councillor Jana Thomas. Okay, thanks very much. Then the next will be C9, Brown Jones. From Jones. 
Can you see everyone online, Mark? I, I can, yeah. I think the next person would be C10, Ian Wisson. I know he's right here. Okay. I'll move to Ian then. Thank you, Ian. Sorry, just turning the microphone on. Um, yeah, I just first of all uh, say that I object to being curtailed to two minutes as well. Um, so I think some of the points have been covered by others that uh, we are shocked. I'm in shock, actually. I'm in shock. I feel we are being completely stitched up, unfortunately, by um, uh, the comments made by by the applicant and also uh, Rockwell Charles, the notion that that he's going to dictate um, what we uh, as residents find acceptable in terms of noise. One of the particular aspects that uh, Victoria Chambers has um, is that everybody assumes that the gardens are part of the church. They're not part of, they were never part of the church. They are the other half of Victoria Chambers. Victoria Chambers was demolished, or that half was demolished in 1969, and it leaves a shape that is like, a, it's a big J, and it's like what I'm doing here. It's putting, it's like a, a, ear, um, a hand cup to your ear. So what we have at Victoria Chambers is a shape that captures just people talking in Mark Square and concentrates it into the flats, into the bedrooms of, um, Everybody in Victoria Chambers, there's 59 flats. We have residents there with uh, young children. We have um, one of them's um, autistic, needs very regular hours. And the idea that, that it's acceptable to have this at all is just outrageous. You, uh, Rockwell has no idea how the acoustics work in that location and in Mark Square. The reason we had it closed and we had it closed, the residents, we got together with the park rangers who objected to rough sleepers using the toilet the, the beds as toilets and uh we, we had the gates put on to stop the drug dealers and there were only a three or four of them but they were talking and larking around making noise now we're talking about possibly accepting 500 people there with with amplified music until insane times of night absolutely this is just preposterous as a resident and it's it's clearly not understood it's not appreciated it's not it, it was a completely peaceful completely peaceful countryside peaceful you know we heard the birds uh, it, after five o'clock and at the weekend now we're talking about being suffering a, a horrendous noise for a five or seven nights a week. This is nights. They're up. They're trying to apply. Thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. Okay. I hope I've made my point, and I hope you understand. This is completely unacceptable. It was a quiet. It is a quiet location. Thanks Thank you. very much. Yes, you. Uh, we 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 heard you loud and clear. Can <laughs> I please ask residents not to put anything, not to write in the chat? That is just to report technical issues. So please stop putting anything in the chat. Thanks very much. Can I now move to the next uh, person? That will be C18, how we chaffer. Is how we how Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, oh, here. I'm, I'm, I'm here, yeah. Um, oh. I agree with, um, you know, what the other residents have been saying. I'm also a resident on Victoria Chambers on the Luke Street side. Um, I did put in a, obviously I put in a written uh, objection. I mean, the main thing to say, my objection is mainly on the base of noise. So on the 19th of December, when uh, Sam Ryder was playing at the church, we could hear him singing clearly in our bedroom, in our flat. And we didn't even know it was Sam Ryder, but we recognized his voice. So that's how clear it was. And even as recently as the April the 7th on Sunday, I walked past the breathing class in the square, in the gardens, and I could hear the music in the gardens. So even if it wasn't disrupting our flat, it's actually disrupting the gardens. Because, you know, it, the windows of the church are not built for electronically uh, played music. Um, so I think that an uh, audio report needs to be done. And before, 
I don't think the building can be opened and then we have to complain about it. I think it needs to be, the levels need to be set at a low level before the uh, licensing is granted, because otherwise we should, the residents are obliged to complain the whole time. Secondly, my other objection was about the dispersal. Um, we live on Luke Street and I sent photos to everyone, which everyone probably has seen. There was a traffic jam at 9 p.m. on Luke Street uh, when there was a fashion show on. Since then, the council have narrowed Luke Street at the junction with uh, uh, Ravy Street. And so there's only room for one car at a time. So if I do think the meeting, if there's going to be a meeting point, it can't be on Luke Street, as far as I'm concerned. It's a narrow street, there's parking on one side, there's only room for one car, and we're just going to end up with traffic jams, you know, potentially at 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday night, which is when most of us have, you know, gone to bed already. And we're hearing people hooting, people chatting in the street. It's not really acceptable. So that would be my objections. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you for being considerate of the time. Can I now move to C19? That's Sheila. Sheila, please state you. Oh, hello. Yes, I, I hadn't actually planned anything to speak. I have actually sent in my objections, but basically my objections are all the things in so much as this is a prime, this is a, a, a local park to be enjoyed by children, people of all ages, people enjoy sitting there, walking through there. It is not part of the church, it's, it belongs to the council. And so this idea that it come, comes as a package, as, as part of the church, and can be used for sort of dispersal or hanging about waiting to go in or, uh, you know, operated by security people. And I live in Luke Street and I really do not want, I know what it's like when all mini cabs and different people line up there or people party out of their cars. And this is what is going to happen. So all the things, the safety, the noise, the security, the the danger to children, There's the, there's a massive boys school very nearby and a lot of the kids enjoy coming in there you know and i don't really think it's going to be acceptable for them to see the aftermath of sort of club nights and at the moment we went to the church and spoke to the people who um are going to be running it and of course their their idea is oh no no we're not going to be running um club nights not at all oh no no it's going to be like quiet weddings and this kind of I mean, really, that is just not going to make any money. So clearly, it is seen to me a rather disingenuous um, methodology of sort of slithering in with a full license rather than temporary license for supposed weddings or more um, quiet events. So I, 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 I just um, my 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 objection is to any granting of any kind of license to turn this building, which has been a quiet reclamation centre enjoyed by the neighbourhood and the park that is a really solid neighbourhood um, amenity in a borough in an area that doesn't have a lot of green spaces and I do not see why we should lose that and anybody who would like to enjoy it for the benefit of somebody else to make money out of a property that is not actually it's intended or suitable for such a thing. So I am objecting to any kind of licensing being given temporary or permanent. Thanks. Thanks very much, Sheila. Uh, Tim, I would hate to ask that you be removed from the meeting. Can I please ask you again, stop putting anything in the chat. If you repeat that, I will be forced to ask officers to remove you from the meeting. Uh, can I move to the next resident? Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, just I wanted to say that I'm aware that the licensing officer has to leave at 8.30. And so therefore, I'm conscious it's 8.15 now. I appreciate you're still in the middle of um, hearing from local residents. However, I think that we have to hear from him before he leaves, because um, obviously we won't be able to do anything afterwards. Thank you. We have heard from him, or if you want, if he's got some comment before, he leaves or if members got questions for him. David, I've already spoken. Chris, do you have, oh, sorry, Councillor Kennedy, do you have question for David? Councillor Smith, I, any question for David? I, I do, yes, uh, please. Uh, um, thank you, David. Um, could you comment on 
uh, any discussions um, that may have been had with the parks team and this question about the right of access and use of the parks um, and how that would relate to the proposed operation here? Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor. I've, I've not had any conversation with Park Service. Probably we need to speak to the applicant about around that. I'm not, I don't understand if what they're proposing is people walking through the park, probably. So, Councillor Smith, any question for David? And then I'll ask David before David leaves to give yep, it. David, yeah, you've been, you've been sitting there patiently reflecting on everything. Uh, you did mention about actions or measures that could be taken to allay concerns or objections. Have you heard stuff that makes you feel a little bit better about it, or are you still worried? I still, still have some concerns. Chair, obviously, you can hear from the local residents also that uh, you know that their their concerns about the the license and the, what's being proposed. So, um, I think you know I should really. Well, I, I don't have to leave just yet, so it's it's fine to carry on for, for now. Yeah, and just one last thing, Chair, just uh, on the planning stuff, because you were concerned about um, uh, that, that, that whether the applicant was seeking to change planning use from, from um, office space to event space. Um, are you still concerned about that? Have you heard sort of, Claire, I know planning is not our remit, but have you heard, have you been satisfied with what you've heard? Uh, you know, presumably, um, depending on the outcome of this application, that would determine what the the applicant's next steps will be. Yeah. But my understanding is that um, the site does have planning permission to be used for offices, and this is a proposal for event space. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much. Sorry to resident. To can I move to the next? That C twenty two. Louise, please. It's Louise Aston. Hello, yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Hi, as uh, the committee has already heard, there is considerable community concern about this church. Um, it has been standing as a church for 160 years where the residents have enjoyed peaceful demise alongside it. This will be a complete change for that community. Um, they had uh, supported the planning application to move it into uh, office use because they recognized that that would actually feed into um, the uh, planning objectives of, for the area, which is employment led first. Um, this application doesn't. Um, it, it's going to lead to huge community problems. It will not lead to a good community uh, life for the whole community, which is part of the sustainable community objective that Hackney um, has as a council policy. It will not lead into the community safety strategic assessment, particularly 1.21, which is about reducing crime and disorder and tackling drug and alcohol misuse. This is a very, very large venue. Almost certainly there will be alcohol and drug misuse on this uh, at this location or in the streets around it. The uh, alcohol strategy at points 1.22 talks about reducing alcohol-related harm. I can't see that a venue of 500 people is going to reduce alcohol harm. Health and well-being strategy, point 1.27. The health and ha Hackney health and well-being strategy also talks about improving mental health for its residents. I can't see how dumping an enormous club in the middle of a residential area is going to help anybody's mental health who lives nearby. Then also public health as a responsible authority, point 1.37. We talked nationally about how alcohol re um, related deaths have doubled since 1992. Um, among men aged between 15 and 59, alcohol is a leading risk factor for premature death. Alcohol related harm is not confined to a majority of heavy drinkers who experience acute problems, the greatest harm is suffered by a large population of regular drinkers exposed to alcohol that has long-term consequences for their health and well-being. Again, this club is going to expose a lot of people to yet more alcohol. The local alcohol profile for Hackney shows that men 
um, have particularly high hospital admissions in Hackney. Uh, they are higher than uh, the national and so London much, average. Please. I will complete this because it is a health item. Health, alcohol is often a significant contributor to the local levels of hospital admissions and injury. And that was stated very, very clearly in the cumulative impact assessment, which was conducted independently by Hackney. This should be thrown out. 160 years of peaceful demise should not be swept away in an evening. Thank, thanks very much. Can I move to oh, Deeptesh, please? Thank you. C26. Hello, you are, Chair, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's both C25 and C26. Before I start my remit, I have an objection from Mr. Patel here, senior, 88 years of age, and his wife, 86 years of age. The ageism that they cannot attend a meeting in person, and it's difficult for people of age to attend meetings like this to voice their opinions. So I'd like that to be raised as an objection very strongly. Sorry, now, we're not. The, of, sorry, this meeting is online. We're not in the physical building. Uh, Chair, you didn't hear my statement. Mr. Patel Sr is objecting to the fact that you do not have physical meetings and how difficult it is for people of senior years to attend these meetings. You're not making it easy for them to make their representations. So on his behalf and my behalf, I'll now make my representations. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, responsible authorities, for coming on board. David, thank you very much for staying behind to listen to what we have to say with regards to the environment. Now, I agree with what the other residents have said in their entirety on the uses but also the fact that Mr. Patel and Mrs. Patel have made it very clear how they fear for their safety. They are not the only people who fear for their safety in such a large area when more volumes of people turn up. Now, I have spoken with Kerry and I have spoken with David. I like some of the plans that they've given, but nonetheless, there are contingencies that need to be put into place. Now, first and foremost, with regards to dispersal policy, I believe someone has already stated how difficult that dispersal policy can be. And because it's going through the back of the garden, there has to be a set process for them so they do not object or do not get into problems with residents on Luke Street, residents on Phipp Street, and residents on Ravy Street. In the same respects, if they change the venue for pickups onto Leonard Street, I am within 10 yards of the premises. Right across the road, I can look into their premises. So if at any time, can you kindly make sure that any policy that goes into place is sorted out with regards to keeping the noise and the volume of people down? With regards to smoking, we'd like a curtailment to the number Thank, of people very that much. are coming out yes. into the courtyard. I have still have got 10 seconds, according to my clock. Thank you, Chair. And I would also like to make sure, with regards to pollution, that the council look into the fact that the policy for pollution in the area is to cut down the volume of uh, cars coming into the area, which this will not do. Thank Thanks you very, very much, much. To the committee. Thank you, Chair, for listening to me. Thank you. Can I now move to David, C33, please? Thank you. C33, David. David. Having problems, having problems there. There we go. Sorry, yeah. Chair. Apologies. That's okay. Yeah, so we can hear you. My name is David Sellens. Uh, I've lived on Clare Street for the last 25 years. Precisely concerning the four licensing categories, I think the starting point for any objection has to be the cumulative incident report. And just one quote, Chair, if you will. There's been a significant change in the distribution of crime, the most intense hotspot has moved from west from the west to Leonard Street, Paul Street and Ravy Street. In other words, the very streets that surround St Michael's Church. Why would the licensing committee agree to something that will almost certainly exacerbate an existing troubling dynamic for the community? The second point I want to make is that the central problem remains Last days can present a mantra or even a policy that address X, Y, and Z. But what happens 
at the dispersal point. And this is a point that has been made by a number of the residents already, so I won't go into detail. But I'm surprised that licensing haven't already addressed that. It's a huge problem. And it's a problem that not is likely, it's not about the laws of probability, it will cause huge problems in regard to antisocial behavior. The simple philosophical truth is that if this venture was not there, these problems would not be there, not on the scale anyway, that it is likely to be. The final point I want to make is that the community are strong, but I've sat here listening to a number of comments that have been made this evening by the police and by officers within the council. And it strikes me as almost incoherent in terms of why we are still discussing this, why somebody hasn't spoken up from the council, an officer or a councillor, to say simply, this does not make sense, what is being proposed. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will now move to... Uh, Thanks, Mark. Uh, hi, hi, sorry, yeah, Councillor Jones. There was one other person, uh, I think it was, it's, um, uh, is it Eileen, uh, who, um, Eileen Daly, who, who joined after the list was confirmed. So I don't know if you want to give her an opportunity to say something as well. Okay. I've got the next person is Devi. Devi, over to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk uh, this evening. Um, I just want to. Uh, say that uh, that church uh, is one of the most magnificent Gothic revival churches uh, in London and in the UK, and quite rightly so, it was granted a grade one listing. Uh, as a grade one listing building, um, you cannot alter any of the features inside the church. Uh, and therefore soundproofing will be a massive issue for stained glass windows. This is impossible to soundproof uh, this venue. I work in the recording business and I deal with soundproofing on a daily basis. And I'm also a radio producer for the BBC. I want to say that um, the planning was granted for um, offices and offices are not events. Um, the honorable um, tenants are suggesting that they're going to run yoga classes, uh, weddings and so on. It sounds jolly on, on the paper. However, what I've heard tonight are pop stars, fashion shows, concerts, um, um, open air kitchens, I've also heard about smoking areas for potentially hundreds of people and hundreds of people at night in a state of intoxication by alcohol makes a lot of noise. And um, you've seen, because there are some clubs down the streets as well, uh, the mayhem that all of this causes. So um, on these grounds, um, for the cumulative impact, uh, we must object and we urge you and beg you to object to this uh, application and license applications uh, on those three grounds which are prevention of crime and disorder we already have a massive problem of drug dealing in the area uh, prevention of public nuisance when it comes to the dispersion of people they are fouling in the streets do remember that although the application states 500 uh, people, the capacity itself has a capacity of 1,000 people. It was built uh, to be a church um, and it was built to become a place for 1,000 worshippers. Why 1,000? Because it is a residential area and we are resident and we are hoping that the councillors tonight will hear our voice. We're very, very upset about this, very. Thank, thank you. Th thanks. Um, that is the final person on the list, Mark. Yes, yeah, sorry, forgive me, uh, Eileen Daly was also here. Eileen, can yeah, I C21. now bring C21? Eileen, can I bring Eileen in? Yeah, hi. Um, Hello. Hello. 
Yeah, my comments really are just to um, support everything else the other residents have said and really to emphasise to the councillors and to the chair that actually people really do not think of this as a residential area, but it really is a very strong residential area. I myself have lived here since 1997. We're committed to this area. We live here. We contribute. And uh, I live in Victoria Chambers. We have uh, children, uh, you know, primary school children who live here. We have doctors, teachers, older people, younger people, a whole range of um, society. You know, we all work and contribute. And actually, um, you know, the noise even from the breathing workshop, actually, you, you, I went to the window because I could hear it. And that was actually someone on a microphone on a Sunday it really does disrupt our lives and i really want to emphasize that we are not this we really feel very strongly about this i think the applicant can talk the talk about wellness and and contributing community events etc but you know in reality they may say they're they're applying for a license for up to 500 people but a quick google search can find that they are advertising the place as an event space for up to 650 people. So there is a mismatch here between what they're, they're saying they're going to do and what actually happens. Um, my concluding point really is just to say that the TENS license that happened around Christmas time, many people were away, but actually I was very adversely affected by um, the noise. And it's not always possible when you are in bed at 11 o'clock at night to ring up Hackney Council and to get someone to come round. It's not actually what you really want to be doing if you want to get up for work the next day. So I really would like to say I very strongly object to this application. Thank you. Thanks very much, Eileen. Thank, thank you. Uh, just to say we've listened to you, we've heard We've seen and read your written uh, objections. We're going to come back to uh, exploring further some of the questions and objections you've raised. But before then, I think I've got the last speaker who is somebody speaking in support. I've got C for C43. We don't have them on the call, I'm afraid, Councillor Richard at office. Okay, that is, that's, so that, that's yeah, fine. Indeed. Thanks very much. So we've had all, um, all the objectors and, and uh, I'll bring my colleagues in, but I'll start with uh, two questions, in particular to David. I think we've had many of the objectors or every of the objectors has mentioned public nuisance and i just want to find out from you i know you're going to leave soon uh if you have any comment on on that and the other thing i know about two three of the objectors have mentioned cumulative impact assessment i um, want to find out if you have any comment around around that as well so that is directly to david so if you want to take that i'm aware or any colleagues me uh, councillor smith kennedy do you have any other question for david no okay David, please. So the, the first question, Chair, was um, in relation to public nuisance, essentially. Uh, well, it, so in my representation, um, I did set out those concerns, just given the size of the premises, um, the hours, the activities, etc., that's been proposed. So there is a there is uh, a possibility that, um, and as we've heard there could be issues around the dispersal um, once people are leaving events that take place at the site and also um, issues around noise breakout although of course my colleague in environmental protection is satisfied that 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 won't be such an issue um, 
So there are still concerns there. And as you can hear, obviously, from local residents, that is something they're very much uh, concerned about. Uh, likewise, um, commutative impact it is within the area that we commissioned a study into. Uh, that study did um, suggest or does suggest that there is evidence of commutative impact. But obviously, at this stage, we don't have a commutative impact policy that's in place at the moment. But um, there is a potential that this could add to uh, that commutative impact that's already been experienced. Th thanks very much, David. And um, Councillor Kennedy, please. Um, thank you. So can we um, address the major concern of all the residents, please, about the, um, the concern that this might be a venue that essentially operates as a nightclub um, or a major music venue? Now, uh, Jack, you were very clear in your initial presentation to us that it wouldn't be. And uh, in your submission, you used the phrase occasional licensable events. But the application and the attached conditions don't put any limit at all on the number of major events or propose any limit on the number of major events. and. Uh, when the, the your own capacity figures, I think, are 672, and one of the most recent uh, residents commented that your website is talking about up to 650, and that's why residents are afraid of multiple large-scale events. You seem to be implying that that was not going to be the case, but were we to grant as is what you've applied for, um, someone under what you've applied for could run a 650 capacity nightclub um, seven nights a week. So what what can you offer? Um, what kind of mitigation, what uh, um, changes, reductions in your application or possible condition can you offer that might, might give us a, a, any confidence that we could um, grant you a license here um, that wouldn't result in um, a public nuisance um, under the Licensing Act. Live. Sorry, can I bring the applicant, either Jack, Kerry, or David? Who will answer thank, that thank you, councillors. I'm going to speak through Kerry and David's microphone because uh, I'm going to ask Kerry, if I may, to give you some further reassurances on Councillor Kennedy's point. And whilst you're doing that, I'll try and come up with a condition for you and your legal advisor to consider to provide us a more enforceable reassurance. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Kerry O'Connor, COO of Last Days. I would just like to start off and just reiterate that a number of times this evening, um, the venue has been referred to as a club and it's certainly not a club. This is a venue that is an events venue. It's based on culture, arts, and upmarket hospitality offering. I'm very aware that um, this is being, um, is live, but I would be like to be very transparent with what our offer exactly is. My business model is a food-led business, not a drinks venue, not a cheap booze, not drunk, branches it's the absolute absolute opposite of out of my revenue i'd like to explain there are three lines of revenue for me food which will be 50 percent of my of my revenue beverage will be 25 percent and my room hire will be the other 25 percent out of the type of events which i all would like to really clarify i have six type of events that i'm going to use this space for hopefully one would be for private social events second one private corporate events thirdly weddings fourth for community and wellness events five art and culture events and six location only which is a dry hire so no licensable activities at all 
I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of what type of a venues fit under those six categories. Under Sorry, Terry, I'm conscious of the time. I know okay. we want to explore questions that a resident have access so that they can hear directly from you what you are proposing but if you can make it concise that would be great thank you very much um Gemma, i come in on on that please and perhaps suggest a, a wording on a condition if you do need the reassurance on that that the provision of licensable activities at the premises shall be ancillary to arts and cultural events with community and pre-book functions or something along those lines I, I, I'm happy to, to talk to your legal advisor about the exact wording, but what we're trying to reassure you on is this will absolutely not be a nightclub, cocktail bar, or anything similar that welcomes revelers uh, late at night type of premises identified in the cubicle impact study. Thanks, Thanks, Jack. I think it will be useful, uh, like, to have that if we're mindful to approve this application in terms of uh, uh food or drink is an ancillary to all those will be will be useful to have and uh, or i know you still want to uh, clarify uh, another point kerry but why you want to clarify that the other thing that i want you to clarify is around this event uh, the music event again can i just make it clear to residents that actually in legislation the law of this land if you're having a music event with less than 500 people is not a licensed activity so we're not we unless that become a life sensible activities if they're selling alcohol so if the if the if the applicants still want to go ahead and david amanda you can come in and have 500 less than 500 people in that space without alcohol or food they're able to do it without license just to make that clear Perry, please go ahead. Sure. I'd like to reiterate by what I mean by live music. My live music is not going to be huge concerts similar to the event that was hosted here prior to my appointment as COO. My, under, my delivery of live music is be a band, it's a DJ at wedding, it's music at corporate party, music at a social party where food is a big part of the offering. The other side of my live music is my arts and culture and well-being program. And what I mean by this is we are a big sponsor of the London Youth Choir and we're hosting one of their um, evenings. And I would like to have, you know, children singing in the church. And for me, that is a live music. And that is very important for me. And I would be devastated if we were not allowed to facilitate that within the church space. I will stop there for the moment. Navy, nice to you. The back. Thanks very much, Kerry. Oh, Councillor Smith, I know you want to come in. And I've got Tim's hands up. Tim? Do you have a question on yeah. this point? Thank you. Um, Thank just you. quickly, given given I know the planning authority and the licensing authority have very different, and, and NIDAC needs to follow the other, but just very quickly, given the planning authority has suggested that decibel levels and the DBA, which is a far more attuned version of decibels than the pure decibels, that, that they suggested that the maximum outputs from that site to protect the residential amenity should be no um, lower than 10 decibel DBAs below residential background noise. How, Kerry, David, are you addressing that? How close to that, are you formulating your plans? Mm -hmm. Yours. Um, can I uh, come in on that? 
first, please. Yes, please, uh, come in, Jack. The first thing to point out is, it, of course, it's further discussion about planning. I believe those planning conditions related to external activity, so to extract plant installed on the outside of the building and to an external terrace. We're not planning to do anything externally in this building related to licensable activities. The proposed activity will be inside. A lot of the historical noise complaints are born uh, from before there was a lobby, from before uh, the applicant has agreed a sound limiter, from before the expert independent advice from Richard Vivian, and from before the further advice given by Mr. Charles. We say that if you are minded to grant, and we ask you to please do so, you have an opportunity to bring this premises within the rate regulatory control of the licensing regime, have all of those conditions set out in your report, and more if you need them, like keeping windows and doors closed, like the dispersal, um, meaning that the noise can absolutely be adequately controlled by those uh, conditions Mr. Charles mentioned, and also a couple of other conditions which say that no noise can emanate from this premises that causes a nuisance to local residents. So can I just quickly supplemental? Thank, thanks. Um, Susan, I sorry, I'm um, afraid that it didn't, it didn't um, answer the question. It didn't answer the question. The question was how are sorry, you Sorry, Tim, to... I need to move. I need to move. I need to move on. We can't please. have answers to questions. I have. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, this is... Councillor Smith, can I bring you in, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to follow up on what Councillor Kennedy was saying, really, about the, the piece about occasional licensable, licensable events on page 55. I mean, I do think it's important, Jack, to kind of understand, you know, how many sort of loud-ish uh, music events, if you like, will be taking place over the course of a month. Are we talking about seven days a week? Are we talking about, you know, what two times a month? What are we talking about exactly? It'd be good to get a handle on those on those figures. That's really mm -hmm. my primary question there. And thank you for offering up those other, uh, you know, elements of conditions like the doors and windows and things like that. I think there's things like that are quite useful. Thank you. Absolutely no problem. In terms of frequency of events, um, my average month. I intend to have a program of 25 events. Now this is going to be a mixture of six different types of events that I'm going to plan into my premises. I anticipate four of these will be social. That can be a dinner party for 12 to 40 or a bigger celebration. Private and corporate bookings will be six times a month. I anticipate to have two weddings as the venue absolutely lends itself to a beautiful reception venue. Community and wellness events, I am planning that these will be nine of these a month. Art and culture, I will do three of these a month and I will do one dry hire. So my intention, as you can see, is not to do any big music events at all going forward. Councillor Smith, you, I can see you, you <laughs> want to come back. Like yeah. Yeah, it would be good, really, I think, um, Kerry, just to go through, uh, we'll go through what a wedding would look like, uh, kind of thing, and roughly how many people you would get coming, because ultimately you've, you, you've mentioned 125 there, but we know the capacity is a lot more than that. So how many people you would ex be expecting for a wedding and what kind of a thing would you be doing? Would it be string quartet kind of stuff or would you have a band, DJs and things like that? And then the other uh, question, uh, Chair, is around the, the type of private and corporate events you were thinking of as well. How would they look? So mm -hmm. really it's about how would weddings look and how would corporate events look? Okay. All the events are going to be carefully vetted and ascertained whether they, are, they fit with our underlying objectives and ethos. Every single event going into this venue will be pre-booked in advance and planned by both a sales and an operational team. Menu and drink options are gone through in great detail. There is a room hive be applicable to all events unless they are a charity event. The numbers are agreed and confirmed in advance. And for all my events, I'll have a guest list. In terms of a wedding, 
a seated wedding, the maximum I would do and host within the space is 200. These weddings are controlled and run by us. We are the event planners. We are the wedding planners and we run those events. So in a wedding, you can have a live band, you could have a DJ, but again, all of this would go through our noise limiting equipment. Nothing would be ad hoc, everything would go through that. So nothing will, in terms of sound would be unacceptable. In terms of corporate events, these type of events are things such as product launches, screenings of their of new company policies, their brand activations, their end of year dinners. They're the type of corporate events that we envisage booking into this space. Th thanks very much, Councillor Smith. I've got um, four residents' hands up. But while I bring you back in, I just want to ask uh, uh, in Kerry, you just answered the part of the question. I've got a question I was going to put to you, which is around supervision. But I just want to know, are you saying that this space, for instance, if somebody is having a wedding reception there, they're not going to be that individual organizing their own wedding reception. It will be through your service. So it's not somebody uh, coming there, bringing as many people as they wish to bring, no. bringing their own DJ. Nope. So Nothing. it comes through. Everything to do with any event is booked through us. So that could be flowers, music, DJ. We will then also add the cost if we feel it's necessary to have a security team member on to make sure that someone doesn't walk into the venue uninvited. They are completely, from start to finish, managed by myself and my team. This is not a town hall you can hire. It's completely managed by myself and my team. It's the same experience you'd have in a hotel where it's all planned from start to finish. You can't bring your own food in. It's done by the, the menu and the kitchens and the chefs here. Thanks very much for that clarification. I know, Councillor uh, uh, Smith, you want to come back in. Amanda, following what Kerry just uh, explained, just if we are mindful to approve this application, would that be a condition that we can, would that be a no, Jack was talking about ancillary, uh, other stuff, ancillary, is that something, a condition that we can put? Because one of my concerns early was anyone can come and have the event as the way they like it without proper supervision. But the way you've explained that if, we're mindful to apply this application. Every event or thing that will happen, activities there will be delivered by your team. I am the DPS for this venue and will continue to do so for every single day that it is as a Thank you. venue. Amanda, sorry, Kerry, that's yes, sorry. fine. Amanda. Um, yes, I, I believe that you can attach any conditions. We do okay. need to agree the wording with the solicitor. Um, so, yeah, that is possible. Um, Chair, I don't know if you've, um, I, I appreciate we're, we're under pressure for time, but have you um, had an opportunity to um, check with the applicant? Although they've um, proposed X number of days a week, um, is there any compromise um, in that, that they can maybe uh, reduce any hours or days or anything to assist uh, maybe the local residents? I don't know if that if the local residents want that or anything. So um, be clear in your mind as to whether or not um, you're happy with what's proposed or whether or not anything else is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Smith, can I bring you back then? I've got Louise, Davy, Noah and Ian Sands Hope in that order. Councillor Smith. Thank please. you very much, Chair. Um, yeah, Kerry, I just want to sort of pin you down a little bit about um the number of sort of live bands and djs that you're going to be having in a month and what i can gather the private and corporate stuff there wouldn't be as much of that happening what i'm really worried about really is a drum kit in there 
um, because the sound limiter doesn't really, it can't, it can't control the sound of a drum kit. Now you can have jazz playing lightly on the cymbals and that's cool, but you know, if you rock up with a drum kit, then everything else is gonna to apply to a level at the same level as the drum kit. So what I'm gathering here is, is that you're looking at having sort of live bands and DJs, uh, two weddings a month that you're programming. Um, would they be, would that, could, could we say that that's two live acts a month? Is that what you're aiming at? Or would, are you gonna have bands for the socials, bands for the private and bands for the corporate? Because ultimately our residents are, you know, we understand why they're concerned. I would be concerned too. Um, so I think if we can limit the number of sort of live bands with a drum kit, then we're, Ian, I can see you shaking your head. Um, uh, then we, we, need talk, we just to need to have... talk about that, get an understanding of how much live stuff you're going to be doing in there. Yeah, I, I think so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So the first thing to note is we are a little bit nervous about limiting the number of events because, uh, as Kerry mentioned, that, that counts the gospel choirs and the children's choirs, in her mind, counts as a live music event. I'll hand back over to, to Kerry and David on drum kits because I know it's particular. So, so drum, drum, especially drum kits. So um, the position of the, the stage is the furthest away from any residential anyway already. Um, and should this be granted, we will be installing a stage at that end as, a, as the only dedicated location for live music. Um, in terms of drum kits, I'm more than happy to, to um, put a blanket on anything that's acoustic and use electronic only, which means that the kit would have to go through our limited sound system as well. Th thanks, thanks for that. Councillor Kennedy, please. Thank you. So I just wanted to try and turn some of the things that the applicants have said into conditions that we might consider. So is there some form of words, Jack, around um, there will be no higher outs to third parties? Um, that that there will be a, you know, uh, whatever. The, I can't. Sorry, I don't know what Kerry and David's company is called, but they will be the sole um, yeah, so arbiters and controllers. That's the first one. Yeah. So David. David. Yeah. So uh, so uh, as someone that's going to would lead any of the special projects here, which includes the dry hires and the blank canvas hires. Which is which is the non-licensable activities anyway. Even those come with the caveat that they will be overseen by our operational team, uh, including and uh, including the people that are at the event and the people that the events are for. So we've recently declined a non-licensable activity for a um, brand that is involved in fast fashion, and because of their because of their practices, that we've declined what would have been a substantial amount of money for a single day event. But again, it doesn't sit with what we're what we're trying to achieve here. So it was declined. Okay. Am I the, so the second one? Are you happy with the condition about all events would be pre-booked and ticketed? Um, I.e., I mean, no walk-up customers. Could could you? Yeah, the end, so we yeah, we talked about this um, before. I think the vast majority of events involving licensable activities will be pre-booked and or ticketed. However, if there is an art installation, for example, a pop-up art installation with a local artist for one month, <laughs> then we would actually quite like to have public walk-ins um, yeah. where somebody might come in and meet the artist and have a glass of Prosecco. But that, that's the extent of this, Councillor. And I do get that sort of more difficult to control yeah. our condition. We've, um, we've got an event in September provisionally with Patrick Hughes. He's a renowned local artist and eight of his studio artists as well to showcase their work. And another one later on in the year with um, a, a group of local amateur photographers who, again, haven't got access to gallery space because it's cost prohibitive, whereas we have the access to give away nearly 80 square meters of gallery wall that doesn't in, which is not included in our revenue stream. So if there's artists out there that want to use the spaces, as we've mentioned in our letters, um, of which some of the some of the residents have responded to but sadly not many of the people on this call um we've offered them the space they're more than welcome to the space they can bring their friends and family to have a glass of wine and discuss their work with people they work with that's what we're trying to achieve here thanks thanks very much 
I will now go to resident. I've got Louise, David, Noel, and Ian. Can I take the question, 30 seconds question in that order? Thanks very much. I think that was me first. Is Louise, that right? yes. Yeah, Louise, you are first. I'm checking the, the order of hands on my screen. OK. Um, my question, Chair, is why does art equal alcohol? Um, it seems to be very, very clear here that uh, Kerry and David don't feel that this can work as a, a cultural venue without alcohol. Um, and the two things seem to be intimately linked. I don't think any resident would raise complaints about a children's choir. Um, so if you want to bring in a children's choir, sure, bring, bring it in. You're already up to 500 people. We would love to hear them sing. As long as they don't drink, we'd love to hear the children sing. That would be great. Um, I would also take issue with the difference between a private client reveler versus a wedding client reveler versus an art appreciation reveler. They are the same. They are all drunk and they are all going to disperse into our residential streets at the time of exit. And they will come out late because that's the times that you've asked for. And we as residents will have to suffer the consequences of that. Any licensing at this venue that takes it late night is going to become a big, big community problem, Chair. Thanks very much, Louise. Can I bring David in? David? Yeah, Please, thank can you. Can I you go to questions in terms of, this is the discussion stages, things we've said, if you have anything, any question, that's what this point is about. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Kerry, unless I've missed something here, um, it, it sounds like the way you're trying to persuade councillors is by saying that last days in the past is in the past and that your interpretation, your ownership, your the custodian of that mantra for now is somehow different. But my argument is if there's a validity to that, if that's if that claim is authentic, then why not just completely rebrand? Because the danger here is that Last Days has a terrible reputation amongst the community based on how it was before. Lord. Sorry, David, can you please ask your question without comment? Yes, yeah, sim if there's a validity to what you're saying, why have you just not rebranded? Be because you're going to attract a lot of people who remember how Last Days was before. And they will be looking to do one thing, and that is to come to Shoreditch because they believe they can come to Shoreditch and misbehave. And their belief is they can get away with it. Thank you, David. Can I go to Noah, please? Uh, yes, uh, I would like, I think, uh, my question and Councillor Chris Kennedy's uh, answer, which is, um, I don't see anything in the, I, can, I hear Kerry and David's arguments, uh, I don't believe any of this is binding. And uh, is there any, if the economic need arose, could they, if the license application was granted, run, uh, let's say in an extreme case, uh, a club seven days a week, uh, even on daytime, uh, many of those exist and have a lot of success, such as uh, print works, for instance, which would attract thousands of people for uh, daytime events. Uh, those were raves. Uh, I, I don't think that question, the, the, the question Sorry, of the binding... Sorry, can, can you ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, is, uh, my question is, if the license is granted, and this is to the councillors, can, um, uh, should the economic need arise, could the applicant run a club or loud music every single day of the week until the operating uh, license hours? Uh, that is my question. Uh, Thank you. No. Can I go to Ian, please? Sorry, Dark and Kerry and David, I hope you are noting those questions to come back to and comment from us as well. Ian, please. I first of all preface it by saying that my real request is that no license is granted 
because nobody is addressing the yeah, and sorry the, I only I'm asking the question, an sorry question, I'm asking please, I'm you. asking I'm asking the question then that um how can you uh, address the, our concerns at Victoria Chambers they have not been addressed I explained the acoustic situation I explained it the way that the building is constructed the Mark Street Gardens is not part of the church, but it's going to be accessed that way. It's going to be uh, uh, annexed that way. And the the final the question really is that you talk about a wedding of two hundred people. Now everybody knows what weddings are like. Uh, how are you going to control these people coming in and out? Um, our knowledge, everybody's knowledge of a wedding is that you have hundreds of children running in and out, you had hundreds of people chasing after them, and then you get the drunk parents coming out into the into the Mark Street gardens at whatever time we the licensing authority permits you to have the 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 venue, the venue used until. So I I can't see anything beyond ten o'clock as being Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Ian. Oh, and finally, can I take David? I have an answer. Yes, I'm taking the question. We are coming back. Can I take David finally, please? Very quickly, thank you again for this opportunity. Um, it is a church. I wish to remind everybody of that. And my question is this. Uh, because it is a church, the nave was designed so that acoustically the priest could be heard by 1,000 people one single voice human voice can be heard um, by 1000 people therefore the acoustics are key and this building acts like a loudspeaker if you put some uh, music in there it will resonate and it will go out this is what happens when people are singing in churches you can hear them throughout the village and i think this is the key here uh, how are you going to control the noise and the acoustics in this building carry that's my question to you and also the acoustics of sorry, the people David. smoking outside and yeah. chatting oh, sorry, outside David. I'll, I'll take that thank you i do i do understand uh resident frustration about this license or uh, if we are mindful to grant it but i think it's inappropriate referring to wedding reception go out as drunk parent children running around and drunken parents just i don't think that is appropriate while i understand frustration from people many people uh, 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 we shouldn't be describing somebody's wedding in that in that manner i've got questions uh kerry jack davy from louise from David, Tim, Ian, and Davy, please do you mind to uh, address that? Thank those you. Those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you for the the, the question. <clears throat> um, firstly, from Louise, why alcohol needs to be sold alongside an arts venue? It's the same reason every single license application that you're asked to determine is made because selling alcohol as a primary revenue uh, generator, uh, particularly in these times for cultural and arts venues. And, and that's exactly why a theatre will have a, have a bar. Without that revenue, these arts and cultural venues simply wouldn't exist. Um, if I may, I'm gonna ask David to uh, address you on the question about why last days and, and the historical conversations. Hello. So, um, we specialize in what's called meanwhile spacing, which means we take a venue that is post rip out pre development um, and has been vacant for some time. It's not the only space we're looking at. It's not the only space we've been working with. It is, however, a beautiful space. Um, and upon discussions with the landlord, the six to 12 months that we would usually occupy our space for has been extended to five years. So the last days is because we usually operate in the last days of a building before it has become something else and we were fortunate enough to work on this premises which has got some amazing original benign artwork in the in the yard uh, and i personally fell in love with it unaware of the connotations that it had to the residents about the previous last days of shoreditch 
So that is more before me. But now we are a longer term venue. We have had a rebrand. Um, for those that have read the letters from Kerry will realise that that letterhead has changed and we are now known as St Michael's and All Angels of Shoreditch. Um, that's what it says on all of our social media accounts and all other bits now. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, Noah asks what's to stop this venue operating as a nightclub. Um, firstly, the hours. And secondly, the noise condition, all of those noise conditions that we've offered, in particular the sound limited condition, would completely preclude any sort of nightclub use. Um, Ian expressed concerns about dispersal. The dispersal policies in your pack, we discussed an additional condition requiring dispersal to be uh, via uh, Luke Square rather than Luke Street. And also, um, I have to perhaps note some irony, Chair, that there have been concerns raised about uh, weddings and people attending weddings at this venue. Um, the irony I mentioned based on the historical use of this building where many more people have attended weddings. Um, and finally, Davey mentioned the acoustics. In fact, the acoustics, he's absolutely right. The acoustics are wonderful. Um, they're really quite a sort of the goosebumps on the back of your neck when you're in the building but it's also why the venue doesn't need big speakers because the acoustics are so great and that's why the applicant has readily agreed to sound limited conditions with mr charles Th thanks very much kerry david and jack for responding to those questions i'll be rounding up the discussion now can i bring colleagues in for further clarification at this at this point sorry i've taken all uh, residents for now i'm rounding up now councillor smith thank you i've taken all everyone yeah. i raised initially raised their hands to Ask okay. our questions. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just, I want to just get to the bottom of these live events because um, we haven't really had a specific number and I think it's important for us to have a number. You, you mentioned 25 events in one month and you've broken them down. Um, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking at about, from what I can gather, four socials, six private, that's 10, two weddings, that's 12. So I'm looking at 12 live music events a month. Is that correct? Am I in the kind of right sort of ballpark here? The rest of the events would be community and wellness events like the ones you put on like yoga and breath work and you know minor gong therapy or whatever it is um so in terms of the sort of the loud stuff really how many <laughs> all the loud stuff really uh and then big numbers of people um over over a hundred i would say that's what i'm trying to get at here i think if i'm really honest there is a mixture between the social and corporate they're not all going to have live music. It, you know, they're not all We just need a number, Carrie, you need a number. I know it's difficult, but you've got to give us a number. Yeah, on, on that, Kat, I, I, I'm so sorry if we are appearing difficult, but if we said, for example, um, we'll have no more than five live music events a month, that would capture the gospel choir, it would capture a string quartet at dinner for 12, and it would capture somebody performing um, at the, the supper club. Um, so, are you? I think are you really asking the, the high sort of four hundred plus capacity live music events? Yeah, I mean, I think a hundred there is a lot, you know, personally. Um, so anything over a hundred for me, but you know, somebody um, somebody else might think two hundred, but you know, hundreds a lot, you know, yeah. already. I think I think what Kerry's saying is that there won't necessarily be live music at those events anyway. So they it would it would be a corporate function with and you know and performance in the background yeah but you still haven't answered the question though <laughs> and yeah, i know I'm, it's hard for you to ask yeah. the question, but we just need a number that's all we just need a rough number how many loud events with people over 100 are you going to be having per month can we if you give us a moment we'll go through that list um councillor and try an answer on that one sorry chair sorry councillor kennedy can i bring you in please yeah yeah so jack uh, while they're working that out, no, he's talking to them. Uh, Jack. 
Jack, can you hear us? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, Am I off mute? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, why, um, if it's meanwhile use, um, and you normally only do three to five years, is this not a time limited application? We have a license for, uh, we have a lease for five years, um, and we have the option to extend. All right, so it's because you don't know how long you're going to be there. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's no, there's no hard cut off, but we, yeah. it was something we did discuss. But because of that, um, we went for you know um, kind of time. Uh, um, and can you update me on where you are with planning? Because yeah, if, so, if we if we do grant you anything, there will be an informative that says yeah. until you've got the appropriate planning permission, you cannot do anything. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Councillor. And um, there has been a lot of discussion on planning, and I know you've been well advised, and you know you understand that's completely separate. Insofar as it is relevant, I'm not sure it is, but it, insofar as it is, um, the planning consultants are ready and raring to go. I think they're actually watching us this evening. They've done a lot of preparatory work, and the plan is, if we are fortunate enough to be granted the license, they're ready to go straight into pre-app and launch the, the, the planning application straight away. And we absolutely understand what you're saying about making sure that both consents are in place. Thanks very much for that. Um, can I bring, can I bring, I'm afraid at this point, I'm not taking any residents question. This uh, time is for members who are going to be making decision to clarify any, any point with the applicant before we retire to make our decisions. Uh, can I ask if there are other questions that we need to clarify? One other thing that I need to, that I think it might be team that raised it in this question was around uh, this dispersive policy and this issue of um, in ingress can done right of way. Jack Kerry, did you catch that question? It was one of the residents, we haven't touched on it, around either uh, there is a proposal which, if you can clarify that, to walk through the path or direct people through the park. Yeah. Can you clarify that position to residents, please? Thank you. So, there, one of the interested parties mentioned the rights of way. The, the way that was presented indicated that there's no right of way, but there is a right of way. The relevant title do say that that right of way may be limited by the nature of user from the church. Uh, it doesn't say it is limited. Equally, a right of way can be granted and the applicant is in discussions with the parks about um, using that right of way to uh, make use of the access gate to Luke Gardens rather than Luke Street to ensure that dispersal is via the most, sen uh, the most sensible route, avoiding local residents and other noise sensitive premises. Thanks very much. Uh... Councillor Smith, I'll take the last question from you before I ask if uh, the licensing yep. officer. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, thank you for that, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I did so read some of the. It doesn't have a terrace, Jack, and if it does, it no. doesn't. So that, okay, that, that, that's... I think there was a terrace granted as part of the office planning development, but this applicant immediately recognised that any external activity involving alcohol um, was going to cause problems. So we've deliberately drafted the application and maintained it without any licensable activities in external areas whatsoever. Yeah, great. Okay, last last question, Chair, if you don't mind, very quickly. Um, you did mention page 48 of your um, applicant's letter to the residents. Live performances, and it's touching on this live music point again, it's very important. Uh, although a key aspect of our programming will not be the preponderance of the calendar, this is what we've been trying to get at. How many? Yeah, okay. So 
again, if I, I may, and forgive me if I'm uh, reiterating the point further, but live music performances do include the school choirs, the gospel choirs, small string quartets alongside a dinner. It is not all about the type of events that cause problems in December. In January, there might not be any events with 100 plus attendees involving live music. In December, there might be around 15. And again, I must emphasize that's not 15, 400 plus capacity events where the primary purpose of visit is to uh, enjoy a live music performance. It might be a Christmas dinner with a jazz band in the corner. Thanks, thanks very much. And um, on that note, I'm going to round up. Okay. Thanks very much for everyone for your contributions. And going back, I'll start if for final comment. Can I first go to or the responsible authorities, whether there is any final comment. I know David's left, or oh, PC Griggs, any final comment from you? Um, no, I don't think so. Thank you, Chair. I think it's all been discussed, and so most of what the, our concerns were of, um, have been addressed, so no, nothing further from police. Thanks very much. And other persons, residents, is there anyone with 30 second final comment or oh, I can see let me go to my open I can, can see Tim, Tim and Luis raise their hand can I take those uh, 30 at this point we're not taking questions it's just rounding up if you want to have a 30 second comment to make please thank you Luis Oh, I think, sorry, Louise, team is first. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Just very quickly, um, it, it, I think if I'm sitting in the councillor's shoes, I think I would be materially concerned that there isn't uh, even a small minority of folk that live very close to this uh, events venue that favour the holding of live music events or DJ events at all. And, and you should have that very deep in your consideration is my final comment. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Louise, please. Uh, I would just like to remind everyone involved that this is not a venue. This is an office building. It has planning permission as an office building. It is not a venue. Thanks, Louise. Uh, Sandra? Sandra? Can I unknown? I think that is uh, sorry, I've forgotten your name again. The lady in cream jumper. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, Sheila. Sheila, sorry, Sheila. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I think this is quite disingenuous the way that it's the music is being dis being described in some sort of way that you know, loud, that live music is somehow really loud with the implication that it has to be sort of some kind of band playing, whereas if there's a choir singing, that's perfectly okay. And nobody's suggesting that things aren't okay. They're saying it's not okay in this circumstance, in this situation. So it's just kind of like wrapping everything up in some sort of cultural endeavour when Really, what cultural endeavour is this going to be? And secondly, I would like to know where is Mark Square and Luke. Mark, uh, sorry, hey, Luke, hey. Luke Square and Luke Gardens? Because hey, Sheila, we're I'm not, not quite sure where they are because I actually live here. We're not taking questions at this time. We've uh, finished with that. Can I go to Noel for last sorry. comment? Yeah, I, I just sorry, wanted, I, think I, was I, I just want wanted to say i still uh, haven't heard any way that the events are going to be uh limited um and uh there's a lot of talk of light live music and as was stated before this is impossible to go through the sounds uh the limiter and for a large type event this will be a problem and finally can i take sandra thank you sandra 
sorry initially i was having problems with my microphone um, okay. my comment is about the fact that um uh, well thank you for uh, hosting this but in general i'm concerned with in case there's a fire hazard how is possible to feed 200 100 uh, 300 an ambulance even outside of my doorstep since uh, the fire um, you know assembly was outside of mark street if i'm not mistaken even though the gate is closed after 7 p.m is still not really answering in case there is a, an, an incident how are you going to be able to fit all these people outside of these very small narrow streets around the venue and thanks, and thanks very, sandra thanks very much sorry i just realized other residents are raising their hands i'm afraid i'm rounding up this meeting at this point as you would appreciate we've been on this meeting is now almost 9 30 since seven o'clock so we've had enough time to go through this application and give residents the opportunity on top of what you've sent in as written application but uh at this point but there is a point that i want to make clear which i've mentioned before i know people keep talking about uh music and uh, 500 people we are here tonight because this uh establishment are requesting an application for alcohol if they're having an event with people less than 500 without alcohol it is in the licensable activities so they won't need a license from us to do that just to make that clear so what we are granting tonight is not about 300 or about 500 people what we are here tonight is about the refreshment the alcohol around the event that will happen at these premises i just want to make that clear so if we tonight if we go away not uh, uh, if we if at all we reject this application the organization can still put event on that are known as just to me i'm glad Ian is not in in agreement understanding that i don't want us to go to think oh look at what the council is done or haven't done that is not us as a planning authority but it is or or us as a licensing authority and with what i just saw what you put in the chat though i've said yes that will be subject to planning and that goes from here what the what last days does either we're mindful to approve this application or not tonight so can i bring uh the licensing officer in if you have any final comment or amanda before we close the meeting no chair i don't have any final comments um the licensing officer has left um mr uh, david to has left but yeah uh, suva is still here um if you needed her thank you sorry suba do you have any final thing to add no chair thank you thanks thanks uh, thanks very much. On that note, can I inform uh, resident and all attendees present that a decision will be sent within the next five working days. But however, uh, in the next 24 hours, we can there will be a skeleton decision will be available through the licensing service by noon uh, tomorrow uh, i don't have there's no 10 application for consideration tonight and a hand just went up mm -hmm. thank, thank you chair i just wanted to to double check i know you've heard of, an awful lot from us and we're extremely grateful did you want to hear anything in closing from us or any of the conditions that we discussed or perhaps i could send those 
sorry, I told you, Father, when I called for final, I told you, final. Yeah, that would be good because if we don't discuss it at this meeting, we won't be able to apply any conditions if we are mindful to grant this application. So please, Jack, if it would be useful to. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the, the first condition we discussed, uh, except for, and I, I can send these on the group chat or, or email after, except for access and egress, doors and windows should be kept closed whenever licensable activities are provided at premises after 10 p.m. After 7 p.m., dispersal will be via the gate leading to Mark Square and not via Mark Street. Next condition, premises license holder shall risk assess the requirement for SIA registered supervisors to be on duty. Next condition, the provision of licensable activities at the premises shall remain ancillary to the primary function of the premises as a venue hosting arts and cultural events with community wellness and pre-book functions. And finally, any drum kit shall be electronic only and routed through the sound limiter. For the reasons you mentioned, Chair, about the Live Music Act and deregulation, we'd be very cautious about further restricting, for example, the number of live music events. Um, if I may also briefly finish by um, saying that those noise conditions do provide absolute controls, no matter what the event and frequency. And your own expert advisor on noise, Mr. Charles, is satisfied that they promote the uh, prevention of nuisance uh, licensing objective. The office use that you've heard out hasn't heard about hasn't worked out for whatever reason in current time you can probably guess why this is an opportunity to grant public access to this stunningly beautiful venue otherwise it will remain closed the cumulative impact study clearly recognizes that problems in shortage the type of problems raised by the residents have been proliferated by the rise of mainstream bars and the demise of cultural venues and this is an opportunity to reverse that trend and grant the license to a committed and experienced management team who are passionate about operating harmoniously alongside this community and will continue to engage with them. That uh, chair, I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Jack. Amanda, did you get all of Yes, I've made a note, Chair. Thank you. Just to say what Jack is saying to us is if we're mindful to uh uh grant this application is suggesting additional condition in 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 uh, uh with respect to various issues that residents have raised tonight so it isn't questions it's just making suggestions to help us in our decision making thanks for that is that an uh jack you thank thanks thanks yes. thank you chair thanks 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 again and uh for the purpose of live stream can i just say i'm closing the meeting officially and inform all present that i have no further business for consideration the meeting has now come to an end. I uh, thanks all of you for your participation tonight. As I've early mentioned, uh, the, uh, in the next five days, there will be a decision, but there will be a skeleton decision available in the next 24 hours. We're now going to retire to make our decisions. Thanks very much for attending. Can I now ask everyone to log out of this meeting? Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Good night. Thank you.